What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, joined once again by Heist. How's it going, Heist? You just getting your exercise in? Just... Dude, I'm getting my exercise in, running around the yard. Yeah. We got two engines. Perfect. We, we finished the line to the iron mine, yes. by we, I mean you. Yeah, uh... yeah, it, it, was, it was, dude, it was a doozy. Oh my god, getting down from where we ended off, like that bridge height, is ridiculous. Ridiculous, I mean, yeah. yeah it's, um, it's... I'm, I'm excited to see it, and uh, I hope that we can pull more than one car with two locomotives. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll see. I don't we know. We'll just see. We need to buy more trains. We are extremely broke. I have six hundred eighty dollars. Uh, I don't know how much you. So we have. gotta make some money. Yeah. We're gonna try and run some stuff to the iron mine to show you guys the line that we built. Yeah. Uh, and you know maybe uh, make some money from there because goodness we need something that can actually pull the hill. <laughs> yeah. And then so I wanted to, once we get to the iron mine we'll talk about it. But I was thinking for the coal mine the iron mine route is six and a half percent right like it's it's like one percent everywhere and then it gets up to like six and a half percent when you get up onto the hill. And I'm thinking for the coal mine, we might have to do, if we want to continue from the iron mine, we might have to just do a 10% route to get to the, like, clear the coal mine pass. Oh, ridiculous. But I feel like it would be cool because if we're always using helper engines, then, you know, get some bigger helper engines. You know what I mean? Have like yeah, four or five need some helpers. Yeah, serious power over there, yeah. Yeah, have like three class 48s, just, you know, or a couple Heislers. Just, that's your helper engine, you know? You boot out the just big boys. Just chunky, yeah. yeah. And then it would be cool because you're like your iron mine and your coal mine trains are both going up that same, as you called it, model railroad route, right? Like it's <laughs> ridiculous spaghetti bowl of track. Yeah. Like it, it's not <laughs> realistic to. If you were surveying this area, you would 100% blast some rock, maybe make some cutouts, a tunnel or two, probably go the other way that's a little longer but smoother, you know? The, yeah. the, the cliffside pass, but this time, you know, we wanted to do something a little bit different, so... I think it's going to be a lot of fun for the sake of the game, but yeah, yeah definitely not realistic compared to our smelter layout. <laughs> no. Uh, I so gotta, gotta say, it is, it is really funny looking at these two engines next to each other where the Montezuma's drivers are almost twice the size of Betsy's, and Betsy's just sitting there screaming fast. Yeah, like chugging away. And Montezuma's away. barely doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta, I gotta turn this switch left. You might have to slow down. I am not able to outrun. Okay, I've got my brake on. It you gotta doesn't go do load much, up, but we are braking. Lumber and beams. Gotta get to that sawmill. Yeah. You're, you're finally getting ahead of me. All right. There we go. Perfect. Here we go. And continue shoving now. <laughs> and then I will go and check this other switch. So yeah, we're gonna uh, load up lumber and beams. The hill is a doozy. Six and a half percent. Montezuma could barely pull a caboose up it. So it's gonna be just great. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be probably like quadrupling the hill at least if if we're lucky. If not more. If yeah, not we'll, more. We'll try a couple cars, but I I don't know. Like the, the lumber cars are really heavy. Yeah. Now I wasn't using sand. I don't know how much. If you're that. not slipping, the sand doesn't do anything. Oh, good. Sand does not increase tractive effort. It's sand only if you're slipping. Sand just increases your adhesion, yeah. So, so if it, you're slipping, you need sand, but otherwise, yeah, it doesn't do much for you. So basically, if, if my wheels are spinning and I'm still maintaining traction, adding sand is not going to improve my ability to climb the hill. Well, if you're slipping, yes, the sand will help. But if you're not slipping, yeah, then mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything. Okay, well, that'll be... The engine puts out as much tractive effort as it puts out, and it's only by, uh, it's only based on boiler pressure, the cylinder diameter, cylinder stroke, and the wheel diameter. That's it. Nothing now, else. Now, for this kind of a system, we've got you obviously have the pull bar in front, and we're pulling the pull bar. Would it make more sense to have an engine at the back pushing and one pulling, or would you always want just all of them pulling and keeping it under tension? Like, would there it, ever be? It depends. There is merit to both, depending on the train. Okay. Um, and in this era, there's, you know, typically you'd end up with engines on the head end more so than edit engines on the rear because everything is a wooden frame with no steel reinforcement. Right. And you would end up, like, shoving the cars in half, basically. You'd just so bend them in half. They'd bend in half, they'd break in half. Um, later on, particularly on the Rio Grande Railroad that uh, we talk about all the time on my channel, you would see pictures of the big engines uh, where they would be double heading or they would have an engine on the rear or a mid train helper or something but if they had an engine all the way on the back they would have the caboose behind the engine because they were forced all reinforced all the freight cars but they didn't reinforce the cabooses so it was illegal to shove through the caboose 
was the uh, the rule because you'd you know break the thing in half basically. Well, that's interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm messing up the feng shui oh, by loading I, I these don't, cars. I don't, at the yeah, same I don't, time. I don't care. The feng shui is not going to matter. Once we get to the iron mine, um, I did set up the iron mine kind of like the smelter as well. So it's going to be it's its own industry. Um, it doesn't have a loop track, so we're going to have to get up there with the cars and kind of pull them apart, shunt them into various shunt lanes, you know, unload them piece by piece, and then put the train back together to head back down. So it's going to be a real process to actually work the iron mine, which will be kind of cool. Um, be neat. Just like the smelter, you know, it's kind of exciting when you have to actually work the industries a little bit more. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it, may, it makes for a different experience. And I feel like it, it's more realistic, you know, all the big loops, like the loops we have here, they're super cool and functional. But like you were saying, it just it just wouldn't happen in yeah, real life. You'd, you'd hardly ever see that. I mean, these days, uh, when railroads slow design... Down, slow down, slow down. Oh, ah! uh, oh, I think it's good. We good? Yeah, no, I okay. think it's good. These days, when railroads design new terminals, like um, the, one of the railroads I worked for was talking about this big project that they did where they designed like an industry terminal for growth thing where it was like they built the rail alignment to just make sense so that you know anyone could buy or lease the space and then the, the train was set up in a really smart way so that they could just run loops around and do that but uh in this era that definitely was not the case <laughs> but how does that work when they're building like rail terminals in cities and stuff like that like you're limited by development that already exists right like you're there's nothing you can yeah. do about it you're just you are very limited by the boundary conditions of the city and everything and obviously the railroad i mean being common carriers and really the driver of the economy, they have some amount of pull and some amount of say in being able to, you know, make things happen and massage things to add more tracks to do what they got to do. But most of the stuff in cities is kind of historic at this point, you know, older, uh, older alignments and all that stuff. So, right. Just, just because, I mean, yeah, you couldn't add a new rail line at this point without demolishing a bunch of stuff. And sometimes that's the game that you got to play. All right. I think we're good got um is that last one loading the cranes don't animate when you click on them for some reason oh yeah that's right yeah this one's about to load all right we're good so all yeah right, so now we got to pull ahead enough to load the last one and we'll yeah with see, the uh, see how this feels all right i think we're good that should load okay all right i think the switches are set as well so we should be good to just power on through all the way to the did iron you, mine did you get the the switch set to the yeah the one over on here i did yep okay oh you you've already managed to appear in the betsy i didn't even see you get up here i ran around the the side there i was too fast for you you didn't even notice You're sneaky i was putting uh, wood in my firebox here i'm gonna keep betsy off for now just because i don't like well technically if we were gonna do real double heading technically you should be doing all the work and i should be doing nothing if we, I should if we be don't need all, the power, okay so. well, fine there we go i'll do all Send the work it. make betsy tug this whole thing by herself so if you're a real double heading then You'd put the more powerful engine at the very front, or like. Uh, usually, you'd put the smaller engine at the front, and that right. was more so so that you didn't tug through the frame. I mean, can you see Betsy? I mean, Montezuma wouldn't do it, but a bigger engine. I mean, you'd split yeah, it in rip half, Betsy in half. Know? Yeah, no, I so get. So you want to have the the more powerful engine being the road engine, which is the engine closest to the car, and you're the helper engine, being the engine on front. But we want to keep everything in tension the best we can. So you you technically need to work harder than I do. So what happens if the helper engine way? can't pull the whole load on its own? It's like uh, well I just then, have to that, have. That's when the that's when the road engine comes in too. So I'd have to have my regulator still on to keep tension between me and you. But then you would also have to have a partial regulator. I would also regulator. start bringing mine in. Usually, usually I would keep working somewhat, no matter what. Anyways, so I'll I'll put a little bit of rag on myself. But I I tend to try and keep our coupler or our bar in this case in tension because i don't want to try and start pushing through that little spindly bar into you we want to keep it as a two-force member you right. know taut and straight otherwise uh, all sorts of shenanigans can happen and the likelihood of throwing one or both the engines off the railroad increases significantly so. and that that bar is pretty like realistic to what they would have at the time in terms of like helpers it's just a little the draw bar that's exactly what they would have had in this era and these ones actually have a pivot pin in them um so it's really bad to have you know to try and shove through you i mean my pilot would end up hitting if i tr tried to shove harder than you could so you really kind of have to run betsy just absolutely balls to the wall and then i you know supply as much as i can help on the backside. 
So what happens if you're triple heading? Same thing? Just same draw, thing. You draw just, bar to draw bar to... Going. The, the lead engines theoretically pulling everything right and then the, the next engines are working a little and then bit less how hard, do these guys hard to keep it like in i know with modern trains the trains will talk to each other like electronically to control the throttles right and if you have yep. engines in the middle of the train they'll still talk electronically to the ones at the front to like control the throttles but back in this day what well, you just hand signal just like wave outside the the window hand or... signals whistle signals and you feel it in the seat because, oh my god, I've, we've run a couple double headers at the museum. Uh, you can absolutely feel it if you're on the road engine and you start shoving too hard and you take the slack off the coupler ahead. You absolutely feel that. And it's it's pretty, it's not like super, super violent, but it's definitely something that you know and you're like, okay, well, yeah, we need to back off and, and let them get ahead of it. But That's worst case, hand signals, lantern signals, etc. There was a, a funny charter that I got to ride, and it was it was sad in one respect where the engine was actually having a, a mechanical failure on the Cumbrace and Toltec. It lost part of its valve gear on the way up the hill, and uh, I mean, the engine sounded like it was doing a jazz drum beat, and it was working its little heart out, the poor 168. I mean, it was just really doing everything it could, but they hit the grade uh, up Cumbrace Pass, and it's 4 to 5% for about 15 miles. And it's uh, actually the steepest railroad pass, or the tallest railroad pass in the United States that's still around. Um, and so this poor little engine is just sounding, you know, losing an exhaust beat, sounding like a jazz drummer. And the engineer leans out at the engine behind him, and he just starts giving a lantern signal like, Give me something, please! <laughs> and then the second engine started help shoving as they hit the hill, but it's just like, Yeah, come on, help a, help a brother out. Can you hear this thing? It's trying to die. <laughs> That's that's such like a crazy balancing act, honestly. Like it's, I mean, with modern day engines, you could basically have. I mean, you wouldn't, but you could have a one man train crew run the whole thing. And now it's like with this, it'd be you'd have like a fireman per engine, you'd have an engineer per engine. I don't. I guess you'd have one conductor for the whole train, not per yes. engine. Yeah. So I mean, you, your crew, you'd have two engine crew per engine, right. and then you'd have your two brakemen and conductor at minimum, right? So. That's really what drove the increase in size in steam locomotives and making super powered steam locomotives was they only had so many people to work, you know, work the trains. And during World War II, that was when the biggest locomotives were built and were around it was because everyone was fighting in the war darn near. So there was only so many people available to help things keep supplied. So they made the biggest engines that they possibly could so that they could use as little crew as they could. But now, yes, with diesel locomotives, I mean, you've got the uh, the MU cable that you plug together between the locomotives, they talk to each other. You set them up the right way, knowing which direction they are. And whenever you throw a control on the lead engine, it affects every single engine just the same behind it. Right, and with cars on modern, is it still one brake line tying them all, or are they independent braking on cars? It is. So most trains still have just one brake pipe all the way down. There have been some train sets in modern railroading that have been experimented with electronically controlled brakes. Right. where there's an electronic cable in addition to the brake pipe, and then the electronic control valves, the engineer can set up the brakes on every single car instantaneously using the electronic controller. Where it just cuts but, valves off from the brake pipe pressure, basically. Like, it just cuts the pressure off. Yeah, it, it basically starts sending air to the uh, the brake cylinder from the brake pipe right away, you know, right. Uh, rather than needing to wait for the decrease in pressure to propagate all the way down the brake pipe from the lead engines. It's a really neat bit of technology, but it's like, you have to have the whole train set outfit for it. And when you've got a bunch of different manufacturers and owners of rail cars, not necessarily all the same railroad and then interchange and things, you have to really have to rely on a common system. So there's yeah, only been a couple sense. test cases of that because everyone's used to just conventional air brakes. Make sure you got that fire set. Yeah, if we're gonna we were be... really going to run these wood burners up this canyon that we built... Oh, we would, we would, dude, we would be consuming... We'd just keep the door open and just shovel wood in. Like, it would just never, it would never end. Ne Never-ending wood. I yeah. mean, it's insane how much... Betsy the, I mean, would run out talk of wood. About the wood. People talk about the wood, like, exploding and vaporizing the instant it gets in there because the draft is so strong. Right. I actually recently posted a cute little short because I couldn't believe it when I was firing the RGS-20 at the museum. You know, we're not firing it quite at tonnage. Uh, we have five passenger cars behind it and three and a half percent grade on a 28 degree curve. So everything's stacked against it. But we can put Wait, a little bit more behind it. Wait, you have a 28 degree curve at three and a half percent? That's what you're... That, that is what we start on at the museum. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the world's most hellish circle to run things on. But um, 
it works so hard. It's not quite at tonnage, but it works so hard leaving the station that the entire fire bed was jumping six inches up off of the grates. You could watch the pieces of coal bouncing in the fire, and it was like, oh my god, I didn't realize we were working this thing that hard. It's really incredible. I need to get my fishbowl cam out to that and really fill it, film it with a real camera because it's amazing how much that worked. So yeah, wood burners, you would be just throwing wood in just constantly yeah. when we would be getting up to this 6% that we're getting up to. This is nice. I like this route. This, this is a cute route. I'm really excited to to see trains run on it. Finally. I like the and fact I, I, that this this route you can't see from anywhere else. It's just like hidden in this valley. And even like the smelter valley is on the other side of this ridge to our right, you know? Like we're not even we're not even close to anything else. It's just kind of it's just a nice little route. It is pretty. It's a really neat route. But that's why I want to attach the coal mine onto this route. Because if we were to I, run... Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pull out my coal, my map. But if we were to run the coal mine down the intended valley, which is like the far right valley on the map, then mm -hmm. we would have to already have turned off. Like, we'd already have to have turned off and climbed yeah. up to the shelf. It would be a lot of extra track delay. Right. And I'd rather, like, continue this route and then just have a, a, a super ridiculous climb past the iron mine. I tried doing it earlier, like when I was just building the iron mine out, I was trying to just like experiment with it. And even at six and a half percent, you can't really climb enough to clear the ridge behind the iron mine. So it would have to be oh steeper goodness. than that. Just, which is just ridiculous. The most ridiculous alignment. I'm excited for it. But we have helper engines. You know, if you're already pulling up the helpers, we get that whole helper. Oh, you'll, you haven't seen the new helper zone yet. Oh, with the I'm sanding excited. tower, the water tower. I got the little shed hooked up. I put in the groundwork fill, which I'm not excited about because the old groundwork you could kind of make seamless. I did some groundwork here as well. Actually, there's a spot here I have to fix because I was getting a thumbnail earlier and I know it's <laughs> it's broken. But I didn't want to save because, you know, I'm driving my train back. Anyway, look, see, I did the, the fill in here, you know, the nice, on the right side nice. there. Just try I like and... that. Make it feel a little bit more attached feel, yeah. and better. Yeah. We just need to be able to cut, you know. We need to be able to cut into mountains. You know how cool it would be if you could just cut? That would be a lot of fun. But I think the logistics of doing that real time in the Unreal Engine yeah, is it's just tough. Kind of a, it's, I get a bit it. of a no-no. Yeah. But if you could make cuts in the mountains, then you wouldn't want to put a default path that they already, you know what I mean? Like on that other valley, you just leave it here. See right here, there's this ridge coming up. Yeah, this yeah. This bothers me. Don't worry, I'll fix it. I fixed it earlier, it's easy. Boom, hold on, I might be able to still get on the train. Hopefully. Done, fixed, easy. Nice, Moving he's on. back on. But yeah, so I just tried to fill all this in, you know, to make it look kind of like a mountain. But you can see how the fill like bulges up, right? Like it's. It's, uh, yeah, I, I can see that. It's, I mean, no one on mine can because I'm stuck in the bad. boiler of a train, but... It's fine. We're both hanging out in Betsy. This is... Uh, oh, you're in Betsy, too. Oh, what's up? How's it too. going? Hey, hey, what's up, man? Well, you know, I wanted to make sure that I could get a great thumbnail of both the locomotives on this beautiful trestle right now. So oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, nice little, it's a nice little... Get the little... cinematic cam going on. That's right. Yeah, I got some, some fill here, too, as well. Oh, my God, that one's broken as well. You know what? I'm going to fix that as well. We're going to pull up to the helper station there. This is everything I dreamed it was going to be when we first talked about doing it. Um, and we're probably going to get maybe maybe two cars if we're lucky. Oh, yeah, there's no way. Uh, but anyway, so we pull <laughs> in here. You've got your water on the main line, right? I don't know how you'd pump it up to here, but I guess from the river down there, you'd, you'd pump it up. I don't know. They would have had a pump house down there. Whether it was a mechanical pump or an electronic pump later, uh, it's definitely things just that push they have it up, to do. Push it all the way up to the tower, basically. Yeah, realistically, there would probably be runoff from somewhere higher up in the mountains that they would true, use a stream just, or something to fill. But yeah, true. Um, and then we've got, of course, our sanding, a sanding house. Um, you know, this is our sort of our main line. And then we've got our, our wonderful. Uh, this hasn't really changed much in layout, but our wonderful engine shed turntable combo. You know, it just. I like it. A lot of people were suggesting that we get rid of the turntable and just run engines back and forth, but I think the utility is going to be decent. Enough. But then, how do you turn and them? having the stuff on the uh, on the you, you run them the down the, the hill spine. in reverse is what you're saying. Yeah, you could. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal, and it uh, you know would make it feel less smells like Kenosha e. But you know, it's fine. Smells like Kenosha. <laughs> See, I don't like this. Look at these ridges. These ridges, you know. They, yeah. The I old groundwork used wider to... Wider groundwork st or something. Yeah, or just like a fill groundwork that doesn't have the, the taper on the edges. Because this, it rounds the edge, which is nice for when there's track on it. But when you're trying to make it one big piece... Big it flat looks, area. Yeah. 
Yeah, but anyway. It ended up turning out pretty nice, and I, God, I love this 60-foot turntable. It's so Yeah, it, well, it had to be done. I figured big engines, you know, we got to have the, the space. Yeah, and... we'll, we'll want to be able to turn a Class 70 here someday, so. Yeah, and it's just, it, the groundwork mainly is not so much to fill in the ground. It's more so that it just gives you an easier time walking around here. Like, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't get stuck in a pit. Yeah, yeah pretty much. So, um, yeah, this is uh, this is 6 6.5%. Um, it starts. Uh, it starts on the other side, right? Yeah, it starts on the other side. It's flat here for the most part. It's like maybe a one or two percent climb, and then see over there on the other side where there's that brick foundation on the cliff edge. Yeah. After that, that bridge is the first. Like you can see how that bridge is just way more <laughs> it's slow. Very steep. Yes. Yeah. So that's when the six and a half climb starts, and it does not stop until the iron mine. There is no. My money is we stop before we get to the. Uh this stone brickwork up here above us oh okay, but you want to try it with the full you want to try with the full train like you want to i do i do just for fun just to see and then we'll right. leave it you know as far up as we can well let's push back and just like make sure we're max speed running running at this thing you know what i mean like sounds good i don't know i i i, I don't think here. we're getting very far <laughs> I, I don't think so either, but I'm excited I, to see what happens. I don't think we're going to even make it to the bridge to cross the track. I don't think... I think we'll stall out before them. Yeah, Lord, we might... We'll we stall really out might. somewhere over the valley on the bridge. That's my thought. But that, that's that's probably pretty accurate. All right, I'm going full forward now. I feel like we'll just, okay. you know... We'll just... Just grind down the just wheels. Just moonwalking. It's fine. You know, yeah. smaller diameter wheels give you more power. So we're we're helping ourselves out now by grinding the wheels down. How would so how would this work in real life? If you were actually stopping a train and going from reverse to forward, you'd break it fully first before you even consider moving the Johnson bar, or would you? Uh, absolutely. You want to keep the Johnson bar in full reverse as long as you can for better lubrication and even wear. Okay. Because if you're limiting the travel of the valve, you're wearing just in the middle, right? You're not wearing across the full pattern. So you'd and leave so it, it full reverse. Your not work that apply well. your brakes. Wait till you're at a dead stop. Flip the bar then you over. Would flip it. Yeah, and then you you could if you had to if you didn't have brakes for some reason you could put the bar in forwards slightly in forwards give it a little steam and that's not the end of the world but you know if you, you got to do what you got to do. Oh, this is good. We're making it. We're going. We're going it places. begins. There are no turns <laughs> steeper than 50 meter radius, so we are we're well into the casual railroading zone, which is why this is so ridiculous. Um, I love it. Climbing was hard because finding the actual points for bridges to be, like, supported was difficult. Like, finding smooth points. Um, I can believe that, yeah. But yeah, there were no, there's no 50 meter radiuses. Everything's 50 meters or more, and nothing goes below 6.5% as of now. We're actually... Come on, train. We're actually... We're actually moving. We're doing pretty good. We're just waiting for it here to bog down. Oh, uh, yeah. Like you can see it. You can see you it can in the see wheels. We are slowing. There, there it goes. Yeah. Come on, train. All right. Well, that was that was a good. Are we gonna make it to the bridge? We don't even. We're not even gonna make it to the bridge. Okay. So sand well, wouldn't help that's us. That's about what we now, thought. Right? Yeah. Like sand's not. Sand shouldn't do anything. I would put your brake on. All oh right. God. Do we not have enough braking power to hold this? I don't know. I'm I'm full brake. I'm full brake. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess we don't we even don't. have enough braking power to hold this. Yeah, uh, okay. that is hilarious. How many? How well, many? I'm gonna I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna I'm gonna hitch. tie a brake on the the beam cars and I'm gonna try I don't know three. Should we even try three? Three. We can try. Not we can work, try three. But... Let's back up to where it's a little flatter though, so that we don't risk. Okay, yeah, or just do that. That's perfect. That's fine. I put one brake on it. They won't go that far. No, they'll end up down at the the shed somewhere over there. That'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Unmanned train. I mean, we can it's do fine. it with three, then that means we can do, we can do, so now it should be full sand, right? Should I go full sand? Like full sand, full, full reg, full break, full, full everything except the break. Breaks off. Yeah. Full sand, full reg. We're not. Come on. We're not, I don't think we're getting it. <laughs> Come right, on, I think train. We might need to drop one more car and do this four times. So I'm, I'm going to drop yeah. another car. Yeah. Hold on. Lumber is heavy. All right, drop that other car. Are we moving? It looks like oh, yeah, we're moving. going. We, we could do two cars of lumber. Okay, that's good. That's good. Might even get three cars of beams, although it doesn't work in stuff. Maybe we could do all four cars of beams, actually. We could maybe try that. I don't remember that. the difference in weight between beams and lumber. I don't either. I, this, I can't believe this is working. 
I wish the sound in this game really accurately represented what would be happening right now. Because right, right now, doing this, these engines would be making a show. And the fact that it's just kind of going... Okay, so how... Kind of but how... Right. Okay, so... so you w the wheels wouldn't be grinding, but you'd hear like I don't I don't understand how they'd be loud because the pistons are still moving slowly, right? Like there's not, you're not. You'd get you would be having limited valve events. You get four chuffs per revolution with right. engines like this. Does is this not a constant grade? Why are we slowing down right here? Because it's only like five and a half percent for a bit, and then it goes up to six and oh, a half. Oh no! The six, <laughs> like this bridge, is kind of an interlap between like the six and a half starts at the brick, and this bridge kind of is like a climb from like the one to six. Oh god! Well, I guess I'm gonna take off the last. All car. right, so hopefully we can pull one car. <laughs> one car of lumber, boys. Two locomotives. Maybe two beams. Maybe we'll get to. Dude, this is Maybe this. Beams, you wanted yeah. the genuine narrow gauge experience, okay? This, this is, is this, this is, is the narrow gauge experience. <laughs> this is the narrow gauge experience, right here. There, there is a picture I've seen in history where there's five two eight O's hauling one car before. Yeah, man. Hill. This is this. Look, we're moving now. We're we're gonna do it. Now we're doing it. So oh now we can god. turn the Sanders off, right? Mine's off already but yeah if we're if we're not slipping you don't need the sand so it should work yeah but so you, you get four four chuffs per evolution but they would be very big chuffs with with your bar all the way forward with the throttle wide open i mean that's as hard as the engine's gonna work so i mean you'd be you're basically sending boiler pressure into the pistons for 85 percent of the stroke at that point so it would be just like ridiculously just really loud, loud. Yeah, and like I guess the blow off out of the pistons would be huge. Like the amount yes. of the amount yeah. of steam coming out of the piston. Because when you when you when you have the bar so far forward, the Johnson bar really limits the travel of the valve, which is above the piston, and it that sets how much your steam expands in the piston, right? So if your valve, your Johnson bar reverser is closer to center, it's limiting how much steam is getting sent to the piston, and so as the piston moves, it'll expand more if the bar is closer to center, but if you're giving it everything, you're just giving it the full volume of steam, full pressure of steam for as long as you physically can, which means that it only expands once it exhausts, which means you get a huge dump of steam and a huge exhaust beat out of the locomotive. And it's it's a religious experience when you got an engine working that hard. It is absolutely awesome. Dude, we are... <laughs> We are narrow gauging the crap. We out are of this. narrow gauging the heck out of this right now. This is this <laughs> is unbelievable. For one car. Oh my god! I can't. We're only gonna make like twelve dollars on this car too. After all this, yep. I'm gonna we're yep. gonna need to back down all the way after that. Like I might get one more run with Betsy, and then I'm gonna run out of water. My boiler is actually going down now, so <laughs> we're gonna have to go back I'm, to the water tank. The, yeah, like we got oh, a water Lordy. tank on the line, but we might have to push all that back. The good news is with the way the iron mine's set up, we leave the empty up top. And we'll reassemble the whole train at the top when we're done, okay, and then bring smart. them all down as one big, you know, one big piece. mess. Because that won't matter. Coming Goodness. down is we'll just tie some brakes. This this alignment is ridiculous. I love it, dude. We're, <laughs> oh yeah, there is one flat section here. I lied. This is flat. Okay, this is flat up here. Yeah, okay. for you for like a, a fraction of a second. It. There's like a little plateau up here, like a little a little plateau in the valley, which I thought was really cool, but. Really, the hardest part with laying out this route was maintaining the 50 meter radiuses. And I realized, like, now, after my last save, I never had 30 degree turns. Like, everything was so steep compared to, right. you know. Yeah, 50 meter turn, I mean, that's, that's keeping it relatively high speed. We should be able to run everything at full speed pretty much around that as far as the speed limit in the game is concerned. So, yeah. it should be pretty fun. This is good. We picked up some speed again. This is good. Yeah, the flat was nice so that we weren't going to sit there and crawl up the hill for the rest of the time. Hopefully yeah, and it won't actually, bog too bad when we for go the other again, cars, but... if we bring smaller loads, we should be able to just hammer it at full speed and get into it, and then we'll be a lot quicker. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's the hope. This is, uh, I think, my favorite bridge out of the whole group. I call this the Lookout Point Bridge. Um, lookout Point Bridge. I like it. I mean, it's just kind of... It's incredibly tall. It's got a huge arc at the end, and you can like it's look ridiculous. at that. You can look at there's all our our, our logs and stuff down there. <laughs> like, yeah, there, there you they can are. See the engine shed <laughs> and stuff. It's great. Yep. Yeah. The tr it's so far away that the track's not rendering on my end. The ties yeah, I only have rendering. a bit of the track that renders. <laughs> the groundwork still does though, which is interesting. But 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is a ridiculous alignment. This is everything I'd hoped it'd be. Dude, this is great. This is like the worst one. That's why the, the iron mine and the coal mine have to share this route, you know? It's just gotta be... We need to celebrate this ridiculousness. Yeah, yeah. and like running like a 40 car train up this with five helper engines, you know? Like, I feel just like... Just every that's... locomotive, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna like hook every locomotive up in the game to one train and see how many cars we can pull up this hill, you know? It's gonna be great. I like the sound of that. It's not that ridiculous. It's only six and a half percent. It's fine. It's fine. The Uinta would approve. All right, so here we <laughs> flatten out. This is kind of it's kind of nice. Yeah, we're coming up to it. I can see it up ahead. Yeah. So I extended this out really straight, just so we have lots of space to reassemble trains, that sort of thing. Um, this switch on the right here with the stopper, that's where I feel like we could go to the coal mine, start climbing up, and then loop over. You know gotcha. what I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, but we come in straight here which is good. And then we've got these two large curved bypass lanes. So you'll notice we're gonna come, we've got some shunt lanes here just for, you know, storing stuff, whatever. Okay, I see what's going on here. This is cool. Yeah, but we can come in here and we'll bypass over. And then there's a turntable there as well, in case we need to flip something around. We've got some space for that. Okay. So we, we can unhitch this pretty much here then. Yeah, um, we'll need to grab it and then, you know, we're gonna run around it. Yeah, Yeah. so we can just, I'll just put the brakes on it. Whatever, something like that. I'm just gonna take Betsy for a ride here. Yeah, and then you just keep pushing forward, and then we flip this back and run around the bypass, and boom, done. There we go. Back down we go. And now we and now we do it uh, eight more times. Right? Eight more times. Seven more times. We might be able to get the beams in two. We might do two beams in one. You know. You know, we we might we might get lucky. I don't remember the weight differences between them. I don't either, but you know, maybe we'll get lucky. Who knows. And then there we go. For the next cars, we should probably, when we're on that big straight part, we should kick them. Uh, I like it. You or know? or uh, when we're on the big straight coming in, we, we could Dutch drop them. But uh, what, what's that? That is the that is the silly term for uh, you unhook the cars from behind the engines and keep the engines running fast, put the brakes on the cars and throw the switch in between the engine and the cars. Oh, and then have the car go have behind the Have the cars sail into the platform without oh, that's, us pushing Yeah, we should it. do that. That, that. that seems safe. And, but, well, you know, it's fine. Oh, we can go. We can go down already. now. Just keep keep backing all the way up. Oh, you. Oh, you want to just go? Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll we might as well go down and reverse, right? Are we, uh, we don't have to turn around and then turn around again each time. That's that's. I mean, if you were doing this we were in real life, the one beam. If you were doing the this in real life, they would spend the time to turn the engine around, right? Like they would turn it around and not go down in reverse, or would they really care? Probably. I don't know exactly what Montezuma had set up. Betsy, it wouldn't matter so much, but with Montezuma, a lot of engines don't like to track that well in reverse. Right. Um, they may not necessarily have a sprung-loaded buffer between the engine and tender. I've ridden on some engines where, as you go in reverse, the tender just bangs into the engine over and over and over as it hunts down the track, and it's really, really, really annoying. <laughs> oh my god. I'm on full brake right now, and it is... I'm just letting it happen. It is sketchy looking. We are... It is a little sketchy looking. You should be the client. Yeah, oh my... Bet Betsy's wheels have just turned into a motion blur mess. Yeah, no, that's... that's them. For me, yeah, Betsy's wheels look like Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, it's... it's they really do. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> we are all in the mail, man. Oh! We got places to be, man. At least, we at do least this going seven down is fast, I guess. It's fine. All the curves are 50 meter radius. We shouldn't die, right? Uh, yeah, Maybe? I'm still at full brake. Imagine I wasn't. I'm gonna turn off the brake here for just this. Turn on, just, just live a little, Con. Come on. <laughs> well, I'll turn off the brake for this because it's flat. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I lived, I lived too much. <laughs> oh no. Uh, okay, well, uh, well, I'll, I'll meet you down at the bottom there, friend. I would, I would like to point out that I should not be peeing in a cup for that because I was given poor instruction by the you poor in the way. Oh, no, 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 no. You elected to take the brake off. Okay. You'll you said, that you I said did not quote, go off. live a little, end quote, heist 2022. <laughs> and then I died. So obviously. It's fine. It's fine. This is scary. This is scary fast. I wish <laughs> I had a speedo. I want to know how fast I'm going down this railroad right now. Where are you even? I don't know. I am at the bridge. Oh by my the shed. god, dude, you got to slow down. You're going to smoke the lumber car. Oh lord, that's right. Montezuma has no brakes. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, no. oh, are you okay? Is it good? I'm fine. It's fine. 
It's fine. I don't think those it's cars fine. have brakes, I, I didn't really collide on my end, because I don't think the game understood what to do, but... Okay, well, hook up to that one, and we'll drag it back up. Oh, I derailed again. Oh. Did you really? I, yeah. Yeah, I binned it hard Dunk. somehow. I had brakes on, too. Wow. Where did you, where did you bin? Uh, over, over, that one I'm probably responsible for. That one might be, might be me. Okay, we can, we can even out the peacup counter then. Okay, I've now got my, uh, my bar into joust mode. Okay, so. perfect. I will back up my hole into your bar. Perfect. And then, and then we'll, we'll just do and the we'll thing. we'll throw a pin in it. Hitch. <laughs> ah, perfect. Okay, okay, uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, is it gonna, okay, excellent. There we go, we're hitched. Uh, go, right, full send. Speed, full speed, sand, sand, using some sand, got some sand. We got places to be, man. All right, we're good. All right, so how strong would one of these pull bars be? Would it actually be enough to pull like the whole engine on the strength of one of those, or would you just pull it in half? Like, is it? I mean, you could break it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. There's definitely it... stories of them breaking in history. So, like the structural, like Betsy wouldn't be strong enough to break it. Is basically what it probably, comes down to. Probably, probably not, because Betsy is just the cutest little thing that there ever was. But right. So that's really what it comes down to. It's it's the strength of the engine pulling on it is going to be whether or not it'll break. Yeah, and, and the resistance of the engine behind it. You know, if, if I'm not working and we've got a powerful engine ahead of me that was working super, super hard or, you know, realistically changes in slack is what would break it. Right. Like if you take up the throttle as the lead engine too hard, too fast, that's really what's going to break it more so than the, the raw power output or anything. Because uh, once you're in steady state, it kind of just works okay anyways. But yeah, definitely one of those little things. I love the view from out here. This is so cool. I'm, I'm really driving is. in first person now where I can just like, I'm looking out Betsy's windows down at the, the stuff. I'm riding on the steam chest because why not? How hot does the outside guides. of a steam engine get? Like that boiler, it's hot, right? Like the outside. It's actually surprisingly not that bad. Um, we It'll, actually like, will it guns. burn your bare hand if you touch it. Uh, it wouldn't, no, because wow. the insulation and the jacketing. So, um, typically, depending on exactly what it is, uh, the engines have somewhere between an inch to two inches of insulation. Back in the day, it was all asbestos. Well, actually, in this era, it was probably all wood. But once they came up with asbestos in the early 1900s, then it would be asbestos. And these days we use a calcium silicate block, which is basically just compressed chalk, pretty much. Right. Um, and then the jacket's on the outside of that, and the jacket's decently heavy steel, just to make it look pretty and, and hide a, you know all of that mess and everything. But uh, we temp gunned it, and last, uh, last night on the, the RJS-20, we had uh, the, the boiler barrel itself, the bare steel was at like 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, I mean, that's the temperature of the steam in the water and that makes sense. But the jacket was only like 125 or 130. So it, you know, it wouldn't burn you right away if you were to touch it with your bare hand, but you probably wouldn't want to keep your hand on it for too terribly long. But how hot, you're, you're coal firing these things, so the fire's at like, what, 1,100, 1,000 degrees or something Fahrenheit? Now, so the, the free combustion of bituminous coal in the firebox is 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit without forced draft. Right. So 1,800 minimum if you've got the coal fire in it. And then when the engine's working, I mean, it's 2,500 to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, oh, it's crazy. kind of insane. Yeah. You must feel that on your face then when you like open the the hatch to the fire. Absolutely, box. when you open the fire door, like, that I must mean, be it's that must be insane. hot. Insane, yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, it was enough that when I tried to film the inside of the firebox for the first time with my GoPros, it filmed for 20 seconds before it overheated. When I had it a foot and away and from shut the fire it off, door. yeah, yeah, it auto shut off at you know like 100 to 10 degrees or something to protect itself. So that was why I I put it in a little fish tank and then it was water cooled and it was fine. But <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, that was a good bit of fun. But I mean, it was you hard could for, you with could the theoretically fish tank. then sink a GoPro into the bottom of a boiler. And it wouldn't overheat if it stayed under the water. Well, no, the water in the or is boiler the water is, still is at 400 degrees, right? Or 300. Oh, it's just under pressure, Fahrenheit. so it doesn't expand. Yeah, it's not actually, you know, it's not at boiling point technically because of thermodynamics yeah, and the, the two-phase kind of boiling. It's called yeah. a PT curve, by the way. Look it up. Pressure-temperature curve. Every material has go. one. 
Yep. I passed thermodynamics once. <laughs> I, I did too. I barely. Uh, they yeah. curved the heck out of that class. So oh no, I, okay, I passed but... thermo with like flying colors. You know what I struggled with was electrical engineering because electricians are just like magicianal. They're wizards. They're magic they wizards. Like, they like imaginary numbers. And it doesn't make any sense. Them. And yeah, I barely passed electrical, uh, electricity, electricity. I can't even pronounce words. It's It was bad. Words are hard. Yeah. But yeah, the okay, so uh, thermodynamics, I loved thermo. It was so cool. It was just thermo such a... was neat. It was really neat for me because it was like, you learn about thermo and in the, in the increases in efficiency, and it's like, this is just steam engines. They figured this out with steam engines. Yeah, oh um, yeah, absolutely. You know? All right. Okay, uh, so pull the pin and, and set the brake. Get get in the engines and run them, run them ahead. Uh, okay. Well, hold on. Brakes off. Who's Brakes off. It was delayed. Uh, we, it probably, it's a little slow. It doesn't matter. I'm out running the engines. They're fine. It's, okay, this is just going to go. This is just going to roll. It's doing It's doing the slow ride. It's flat is it, here, is right? Is it that slope down towards... Is it? A little bit. We, we should have pulled the pin later. It's fine. Should've. It's fine. Is it good we might have it? to come back and get it. We will perfect this shenanigan. Well, Everybody I mean, when we have a bigger speed. train, we'll be pulling in once. And, like, with bigger helpers. You know, we'll pull in right. once, unload the whole train, turn the engines around, and then... We still haven't even unloaded yet. We're... we're we have a process ahead of us. <laughs> we really do. This is okay. great, man. This is this is what your the badge. This is your job for the day on the narrow gauge. You're like, ah, oh, we need you to bring these twelve cars up to the lumber and your or up What's to the your, iron mine. What did you What did you do today? Well, I ran the same train over the same railroad twelve times. Yeah, yeah. that's your man. It's narrow gauging. We're we're narrow gauging it up. All know? right, we have Dutch dropped the two o seven. It's rolling into the siding. Oh, so you're putting on that one. Up. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, the unload Just Dutch, one. You might as well send it to the unload track, right? Yeah. True. I think it's seventy-two dollars a car for those, so eight times seventy-two. Uh, we're still going to be very far away from getting another locomotive. That's okay. We'll run some trains back at just the freight depot area and make make boatloads of money that way. I feel like this is not the money-making route yet. Not not yet. It's not until we've got some serious power. Yeah. Yeah. And even coming up here, we're going to be drink bringing empty hoppers up. Thank God we don't have to bring hoppers down because that would be yeah, a nightmare. Yeah, loaded loaded hoppers up would be. Pain. Oh yeah. Like, but loaded hoppers down is still going to be a very scary experience. That is going to be very fast. Going to need some brakes on that train. Yep. Yeah, it's going to need some serious brake men to to run that. I feel like the brake shoes would be melting off Betsy if that's, I tried. To... Well, so th that's actually a, a real problem that they ran into on hills like this, and the friction brakes were actually not enough. And so you'd end up with engines with water brakes that took steam from the water space, the boiler, through a small pipe and let that expand in the engine to slow down because the friction from the brakes, they would heat the shoes up a bunch and wear the shoes down a bunch, which is a problem. But the steam engines have tires like we talked about, and they could heat the tires up enough for the tire to fall off. And that's happened in history. So wait, you're, when you take cold water, you're saying put cold water into the piston just to act as a resistance? Well, so it's not cold water. It's water from the boiler, right? So it's taking boiler water from the water space, not the steam space. And so it expands a bunch into, and it flashes into steam as soon as it gets into the piston because it's no longer under that same pressure when it's coming from the small pipe, right? But it's on the wrong so, end of the cycle. So it's fighting. But it's on the wrong end of the cycle. Well, it's either on the wrong end of the cycle, which is one way that they plumbed them up sometimes. So you could leave the bar in reverse in this case and it would work. Um, but other railroads set it up so that you'd have to put the reverser or the Johnson bar in the opposite direction to use it. So you would literally throw it in forward and then just like hammer steam into the pistons. Exactly. Yeah. And then that would just be a, a natural resistance that would slow it down and not using friction. So you weren't, you know, ruining but tires it wouldn't, or it wouldn't, derailing. How would they? So like in this, if I go full reverse or forward, it starts spinning my wheels forward and I'm basically doing like a moonwalking, you know? But Well, that's because Railroads Online doesn't have proper simulation of how the wheels interact with the track yet. So, you know. Right. So the, the friction of the wheels would keep them spinning backwards, even though. Yeah, absolutely. The friction, the momentum. I mean, if, if it's not enough steam. Uh, you know, to actually apply power. It's just a resistance. The water break would be plumbed through something like a three-quarter or one-inch diameter pipe. Right. So it's nowhere near the, you know, the massive dry pipe amount of steam sent to the engine for real. All right. Boss said to only take one car at a time, but, you know, we, we're, we're, we're... We're pushing the envelope here, We're lazy. Friends. We want to get the job done, you know, so it's... 
Yeah, the best kind of railroader is a lazy railroader. That's that's a saying in the industry. They, they want you to ride everywhere rather than walk, because when you walk around the ballast and the ties and everything, it's easy to slip, trip, or fall. So they, there's a saying in safety that is a good railroader is a lazy railroader, which is a silly thing. But. Well, we're moving. And we're getting on the steep bit. We're, we are running kind of quick this time, which is nice. Yeah, we've we are got slowing down, speed. though. We are, but if we can make it to that flat part, I think we'll be okay. I don't know. Ugh. Just keep That's her spicy. pinned. Just keep her pinned. <laughs> Just give it everything. Come on, Zuma. Oh, no. Zuma! It might not. It might not. Come, Come on. on. If we whistle, it'll give us more speed. It helps. The whistle helps. Yo, you engine! Pull! Pull, you piece of garbage! Go! Go! <laughs> There's no way. Well, There's... we're at walking speed now. We haven't stopped yet. Yeah, uh, does that? But doesn't that mean we're eventually gonna stop? We we are we are going to stop. We're not yeah, gonna that's we're that, doomed. We're not gonna make it. That's all, right. all she wrote. All right, let's brakes on. I'm gonna tie the the beam car, and you know we'll just leave it here, I guess. Yeah, I mean we'll be able to push back and pick up two of them, and then do the beams in groups of two, and then that last yep. lumber car. So we'll be. Oh boy, what a what a mission this has been. <laughs> this is a bit. We, we did this to ourselves. You know, there are a lot of a lot of intelligent people saying, hey, you guys should have started at like a 2% from the smelter to make it up to the iron mine. But you know what? This yeah, that's is more lame, fun, though. Okay? This, that's, is, this is the cool way to do it. This is the unique experience, all right? We wanted to have the small road, mount, or small, uh, small gauge, you know, three foot gauge mountain railing experience. We're doing the Uinta Railway thing. So when they eventually give us the Uinta Railway Mali, we're going we're gonna to have fun with that boy on this alignment. We should name it Mor Moron's Castle in the Uinta's honor. <laughs> Dude, this is actually ridiculous. It's it's cool to have a helper engine shed, though. I feel like that's a really cool use to actually, like, for sheds in this game, you know? Yeah, it's actually really neat. And it, it'll be nice. We got to keep the engine staged there. So this is so, some big choo -choos. so incredibly dumb. <laughs> it really is. How fast are we going? Not. <laughs> yeah, no. We need, we need a, we need, this is like having a purpose for a Heisler, though. Maybe, you know, like a Heisler climax. Yeah, that's, that's what people have been saying. Like, get a couple of climaxes, get a couple of Heislers, and just pull everything. Yeah, pull the I mean, entire world up this hill. If we put two climaxes, I mean, we're pulling millions of pounds up the hill. It's going to be fun. slow, but it'll, it'll pull it. So, that's, that is the point of the geared engines. That is the whole thing. What, so I've been talking about the Uinta Railway and their ridiculousness because they did stuff like this. They actually did stuff like this. They had a curve on part of their alignment called Moro's Castle. And Moro Castle had a 6% grade and 66 degree curves that they oh ran my. those articulated engines around. The that railroad was like so death. bad, they tried to use chaise to start. But the chaise going around those sharp curves the U joints and the drive shafts couldn't make the, the curve. The, sh the drive shafts would fall apart. So they would take the shea as far as they could, and then they, then they would double, triple, quadruple the hill with small little engines like these until they got the articulated engines that they ended up just use, do, doing over the hill anyways. And the articulated That's engines insanity. are like what, a 4 4 type thing? They're a 2662. Two. A 2662, two. okay. But they They're articulate huge. between the sixes. They do, yeah. So the front engine pivots a bunch. And those Uinta ones, they were insane because they had to go around that 66 degree curve. So but they how do they, one. so hold on a second. How do they, how do they make, like, it's one boiler for both sixes? And it's it just, is. it's like The boiler a, a... doesn't swivel, just the engine does underneath it. And so there's a lot of great memes, like, I heard you talking smack, boy, of the engine pointing down the curve, but the boiler staring you straight in the face with those locomotives, because they pivoted so far, it's insane. So the whole, like, cab would be, like, the cab and the boiler would stay stationary no matter what the, the bottom exactly. trucks were doing. And then, and then the, the lead engine would swivel out from underneath it. Imagine that, like, with the Montezuma, with the, the lead truck that swings around the track, just imagine that's another engine and the boiler sticks out ahead of it further. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's it's insane. So they bought one engine from Baldwin. They said, hey, 
make us a locomotive to the specification. It showed up. They modded the heck out of it to make it do what they wanted it to do. And then they sent the list of mods back to Baldwin and said, build us another one, but do it this way this time. Like, you didn't make it insane enough for us, you Pennsylvanians. Give us the crazy choo-choo we need. <laughs> Pennsylvania's pretty flat, too. Like, why are they Why are they doing these crazy curves? There aren't that many they were, they were probably like, what in the hell are these Coloradans smoking? Like, why are they doing this? <laughs> so ridiculous. All right, I'm going to jump on the car. I'm unpinned. You... Oh, you're unpinned. Okay, good. Okay, I got the... We're going forward. I got the switch. Oh, you got to leave the reg on, on the engines, though. Uh, but con, con. I made. Con. There were mistakes that were made. Um, sir, 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 sir. <laughs> you you have blown up Betsy. You have killed Betsy. Uh, You've killed the Montezuma. I forgot to leave the reg on, and then and then the, the you, just, you threw the switch underneath the. I threw the, the, the switch here's your under cup. The... Here is your <laughs> cup, sir. That was, that was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Uh, uh, smidge, yeah. Uh, and you can't even blame me for this uh, one. No, I, and we can't even... We still have to pull the, the train car forward, so... Uh, and Yeah, I, the, the Zuma is, is dead. All it, right, well... It, it cannot move itself. All right, we'll get you pinned up here in a second. Dude, this is great. This is, this is so much extra effort just to unload a few cars. Right. It's so much more We, so we much did this to work. ourselves. Dude, Dunk. it's 100% right. worth it. Gotta get that authentic train experience, no? Hey, Con, go ahead and bring him back. <laughs> to use perfect radio etiquette. I gotta do three, right? Three is backwards, yep. Three shorts, to be precise. Although, while well, running, it means to stop at the next station. Okay, well, now you're just confusing me. Oh, well, you know. We'll, we'll learn you one of these days. What a mission this has been. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> This is ridiculous. It's so great, though. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I love I love laying track. Like, laying track is cool and all, but, like, running the track is obviously just such a fun experience. And running track when it's more, like, purpose-built rather than having to just loops, it just it adds that extra layer, you know, of, like, you got to solve really the puzzles. Does. You don't have to, but it, it really adds a fun layer of, you know, gameplay that's not really there otherwise. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. We could easily just, you know, re-rail everything and call it a day, but that's... That's not fun. That's not in the spirit of playing the game. It's not in the spirit of small railroad. Yeah. Five more gauge. cars to the hook, Con. Uh, where are you? Jesus take the wheel. Um, three, three more cars to the hook. Jesus take the wheel. Um, two, two, one. You said five mile an hour is the limit, right? Five mile an hour is the Some, colliding. Well, four, but yeah, that's fine. Oh, is it going to get it? Uh, I think so. Oh, yeah, you managed to do that. Perfect. This one's gonna stop. Excellent. Go train, go! All right. All in the mail again. Yes. The very beam, large pieces of wood-shaped mail. We might. We are. Look at how fast we go. We are amazing. We actually like get to run at speed when we hit this. So hopefully it retains that speed. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. We'll be able to find it if we make it to the first plateau. I think we're good. But. With two, two of these cars, I mean, the load weight is well, also like, the self weight of the car. It should be okay. We should be fine. Yeah, we're only like a thousand pounds heavier. I, oh, I guess to plus, believe. Plus the car weight. I choose to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we need we need better engines. It's amazing. <laughs> Dude, these are the only two engines we have. I'm excited for when they add passenger cars to the game, because Zuma will feel really at home with the passenger cars, because it's really not a freight engine, and we're asking a lot of the poor little thing right now. Yeah, but we gave it a we gave it a porter. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> the porter is a uh, uh, it's a little industrial switching engine. It is not an anything engine. <laughs> does it feel like we're losing? It does. A battle. This is this is, this is sad. I'm gonna go check brakes just in case. Brakes I don't, off. Yeah, I don't. Brakes off. Come on, trains! Your tender brake is off too. Yep, all the brakes are off. This is just. Well, if we can make it to the just, plateau, then we can on. maybe get enough speed to at least park the car at the plateau. That would be that would be ideal. Oh my god, we're gonna have to do this eight times. I think <laughs> <laughs> Two engines, one car, eight times. Oh, man. Welcome to the crap. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to railroading 101. Oh my goodness, dude! Come people on. don't. People don't. I can't believe that they actually did this kind of stuff in real life. Like four engines, one car, over and over right. again. <laughs> this is what we did. But I mean, it was like 
going up to mines with like gold and silver and stuff. And right. So, it was, like, so it was one really car profitable. would be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That and labor was cheap in that era. So, you know, it was fine to have, five, you know, 10 dudes for crew just for the engines. I'm putting my sand on preemptively just in case it maybe makes a difference. Probably okay, when you wise. actually put sand on the rail, it's putting sand on the rail between the, the, the rail and the, the wheel of the train, right? But yeah. Wouldn't that get crushed like down to like like a powder or something? Like, how it does, does that, how it, does it that... looks weird after you run over it? Yeah, it definitely does crush down. And then and then what, it just blows off the rail and they're like whatever? Like it's just Yeah, eventually the wheels kick it off or it gets blown off the rail or, or it ends up as a beach next to the rail, typically. Right now, what would actually happen going this slow, at least for the Zuma, is that you would get to the end of one power stroke, and then it would center up because you're not able to apply power at the end. You know when you're up front dead center, right, or back and the dead center, would lock. and then she would just stop. Like it, she would not continuously try to put power down like this. The the power simulation is not quite accurate. But would Betsy <laughs> be able to do it because it's got the angle with the smaller drivers? Betsy might do a little something, but I mean, you know, just you'd a have lot a of chatter chance at a slower. But dude, we're moving. Know. Well, I'm not complaining. We're still we're moving. We're not stopped. We have at a not time. stopped. The hilarious thing is, you would be slipping and and fighting these engines to try and do this, and you would be throttle open, throttle closed, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to try and keep this moving like this. So it what would, would happen? So much more involved. <laughs> what would happen if, uh, like, you did start slipping? You tie brakes and hope it catches, or like, is that usually you, you reduce the throttle and then come back out on it and you start sanding? You know, if you slip with sand on, I mean, that's that's pretty advanced. The sand usually really, really helps. So, dude, we're, we might we might make this plateau. We we really might. Check check back at eleven. Yeah, no, this more is actually then. this is actually insane. This is this slow back. Yeah, yeah, I feel like there's no way you would make it through a power stroke. Your piston is so slow; it wouldn't have the momentum to push through the zero point. Yeah, like you would, it's... you'd send you'd get to the top dead or front dead or back dead center, and then you would stop. That would be that. And then and then the only way to get out of that is to roll backwards down the hill basically yep roll backwards a little bit till you get both sides again and then hope that you can keep enough steam and momentum to get past it yeah so they would roll backwards down the hill to a point where they could maybe pick up speed with some flat part or something you could try that or i mean realistically if you've got the power to start the load you have you would just roll back just far enough i you think know, you ran out of sand in. did i run out of sand it's no longer coming out, and now we're stopping, oh, yeah. and I'm slipping. Well, that's unfortunate. We were actually making it with... All right, let's go full brake. Uh, let's tie the back car, I guess, and just... Yep, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll run come the back one. for it. Oh, my God. Yep, this is ridiculous. All right. All right, let's, let's just go. Kick the air off. Sorry, kick the brake off. I guess we should uh, do one of those magical finger-snapping moments and, uh, you know, when think, we end up... I think that's probably wise, yeah. Yeah, end up end up at the top of the iron mine with all our cars. Yeah, this is sort of a repeating process. I think, yeah, process. Edit, edit mode it, because, uh, yeah, we're... This is this is a long one. This has been I thought fun, this was going to be one. two, and I thought we were going to get two cars. We only get one. That's so bad. No. Yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll join you all uh, after these brief messages. Yeah, I'm just gonna do one of these. Wow, heist! That took no time at all. Look at that. that yeah, was, look at that. That was magical. That was we so definitely quick. Didn't uh, send it too hard and right. derail things. And cups we want to um, bring our bring our lovely. Uh, let me see here. Four two six. No, four two four zero. Oh. <laughs> Is that right? Oh four zero oh, two. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, we had 040240. Yeah, right. that one. 040240. Yeah, perfect. Let's just bring that back. Uh, we'll put it onto the round table, turn it around. And then God, we'll just reassemble our flat cars. It should. It should. It's Zuma and Betsy, right? They're small. Yeah, I can get there from this track, right? Yep, yeah, it's all connected. We can do that. Go this way. Go that way. And then we'll reassemble this train. I'm going to just check and make sure all the car pins are set correctly so we can just kind of push these all together. It's probably a good idea. This will be the last <laughs> time we come to the iron mine for a while, I think. Yeah, yeah, we need more. We need more engines because right. we yeah. need to be able to do the hill in one shot and not six or eight. 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 Yeah, eight Literally shots. Eight. Eight. I mean, we made it halfway with the two cars, and we had like not even halfway, probably a third of the yeah. way with the two cars of beams, and had to cut them off. To be honest, though, so, it feels like a real narrow gauge experience. I mean, we're you know, I know is, I'm saying that a lot, is but genuine hysterical uh, shenanigans. Yeah. Dunk. Dunk. Jeez. 
fine. That's what the buffers are for. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Close that. Good. Didn't derail. Look at that. We're on a roll now. We are. We're, Dude, no more cups. No more no cups, more to cups be in this today. Episode. We're about to take eight empties down. Uh, there may be more cups. There nah, really empties, more cups. bro. We'll we'll be fine. We'll tie the back couple cars with some brakes. Maybe. Dunk. Oh, dunk. God. Dunk. Oh. Dunk. So in this case, if we're going down the hill, right? You wouldn't want to break with just Betsy because that would be way too much compression on Betsy. Yeah, and you'd, you'd ideally be breaking with, you know, slight handbrakes on each car or mega handbrakes on the last car, really. Uh, and also, it's really, really bad juju to run downhill with two engines. That's a bit of a no-no. Oh, you would actually fine. disconnect them and run them down separately. Yeah, it became a, a rule on the Rio Grande, actually, to make sure that you didn't double head downhill. At, because they had some sort of slack action happen with two engines and the one engine banged into the tender of the next one hard enough that it uh, it took the two both engines and knocked them off the fill and they went tumbling down the mountain so uh <laughs> ever since then they've banned double heading downhill so we would so. double head up with our helper trains not betsy and then yeah. the helpers would just go back down Return on the, to the helper station light yeah interesting I've got a 66% break on the Zuma, and whatever I've you've got back both there these, seems to be holding Both these it back good. cars braked fully, 100%. Of the four, four back cars? Just the back two, back two. Back two, okay, oh my goodness. Yeah, we're still picking up speed, which is kind of insane. Well, 6.5% grade, man. This is genuine Uinta madness. Yeah, this is, uh, it's a bit sketchy looking, but that's, I, if I have to, I'll run and tie this one. I'm going to tie a third car. Oh, can't. Oh, God. Oh, wise. no. Oh, oh Ken. Oh, what did you do? I didn't do anything. Ah! I didn't do anything. Oh, my God. We, we picked up too right, much speed. I left speed. the Montezuma's brake on. We did, picked did up. Did everything go in the dirt? Uh, the last cars fought, yeah, it's all, it's, I didn't even save either when we assembled that. Oh, I probably, man, so we gotta re-rail this whole thing. We gotta re-rail it. <laughs> See, if we had signs, I would mark a sign every place that we've had an accident on the railroad throughout the whole process. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could go back through the videos and, like, look up when we had all the accidents, but, like, it would be great just to have all these danger signs at every accident spot. You'd eventually have the whole railroad just covered in, in memoriam them. of Heiss's train yeah. on this day. Yes. <laughs> I, we just shook we just shook right off the rails there i feel like that's what happened we were that was a little ridiculous i'm on full brake again back two cars yeah i've got about a half brake on the zuma oh my god i love this initial helix bridge it looks so ridiculous it looks redonkulous from up here it's awesome ah Ah, oh no! Ah. Oh no! What is happening? Oh my god, we weren't even going that fast! We weren't going that fast! Oh, oh my god! No. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... The cups! The cups are calling! Oh, need another... I got the brake on full, but I, I don't think I can stop on this grade uh, with the Zuma. Oh, well, at least you're still good. Oh my god, dude. Why are we derailing so much coming down this hill? Maybe, maybe compression is the answer. Maybe tension braking... Is bad. Makes the physics mad. This is insane. Oh boy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get dunked. Well, I can tie more brakes, but that's fine. Yeah, I feel how like many cars. How many cars do you have? I've got three I got five. that are down here. I have five. Okay, so only three fell off significantly. All right. So moral of the story: compression brake. Uh. Yep. Yep. The whole way down. <laughs> this this episode wins the pickup counter. That's for Dude, sure. Dude, this was insane. I can't believe. Well, helper engines. I think is gonna be a big a big help. Um. Literally, yeah. Yeah, and then and then compression braking, I guess. But I guess that's the, the, the. We'll see if that's the answer. I've been told that it works or something. Well, we won't be able I to find know. out now. We'll have to be the next time we go down this big hill again because. Uh, Which will be in approximately 15 episodes once we have, you know. Yeah, once we have an actual engine to do it. Okay, I've got a Lincoln pin in this end over here. All right, I'm rolling with 0% brakes, but I've slowed it down a fair amount, I think. Thing. The Zero. Zuma's vaguely not on the track, but it's, it's, it's working. Oh, now it's not. No, it's no, no. Oh, okay, it is definitely bye. Not on the track. Okay. What it's... in the heck is going on? <laughs> like, I don't know if it's doing what it's doing. It's on twirling. My end, on your it's end. doing like ballerina spins. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 uh, yeah, I don't know if this this looks like it's attached. That looks good. Oh, you're attached to the tender? No, you're not. I, uh, I'm gonna flip my reverser the other way. No, I'm just 
Okay, well here I'm just oh, here. I got you. It's fine. I can get I can maybe can I can I Montezuma, there we go. Oh no, why are you doing this? Alright, there we go. There we go. You're good. I think it's very fun. But we need big choo choos now. Yeah. No, I, I love this road. I think this road is the best. Like the most unique way I've ever seen to get to the iron mine is absolutely ridiculous. Makes no sense. You it never want to do it. I love it. it. I love every bit of it. <laughs> I had so many comments too on the last video of people being like, why don't you just build it 2% all the way from the smelter? And it's like, no, no. Why don't you do switchbacks? Yeah. No, I just want to put the ragged full and watch the engine get on its knees. Yeah, I could struggle. <laughs> it's great. I'm not, uh, uh, the Betsy Porter's just getting towed. It's our caboose. It's not actually providing any power. It's fine. You're like pretty much flat the whole way and then 2% up at the smelter to get back to the freight depot. So it should be good. And now I can come hang out with you in the Montezuma and, you know, just, just chill. Wow, what an adventure. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's a, that's an adventurous bit of railroad back there. That is some serious, serious shenanigans. We really, really need some big power for that. Yo, but uh, think about it. Like, we are, we spent, I don't know, a couple hours figuring all this out, at least. That's at least a couple hours. It's fun. And, you know, and it just, it's, it's, if we were working the narrow gauge, this would be an all day job. You know, this would be a yep. eight, eight hour <laughs> plus day, 10 hour, 12 the hour day. Alignment. Yeah. Just to run eight cars up a ridiculous slope. That's fine. I guess we're going to uh, head back to the freight depot. Yep. Park the train, start seeing about what we need to do for making some money next time. Maybe a bunch of cordwood runs or something. Just the Cord, depot, cordwood or? and like logs, beams, just, you know, load yeah. it all up, sell it to the just, freight just depot. Just build, build big flat trains. Yeah, that sounds like yeah, a fun Big time. flat trains, make a lot of money. Uh, you know, spend a lot of time loading, but I think I think that's the, the name of the game to make as much money as we can as quickly as possible. Need some money so that we can get more engines, so that we can get more people and, and more yeah. money. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. At that yeah, point, it's, it's kind of like an exponential curve. You know, once we, once we start picking up the the money and the industries like once we can start delivering iron and then start selling the iron you know the money will flow but it's right now we can't afford hoppers and if we could i don't even think the two engines could pull a hopper car <laughs> probably like, up that not hill. <laughs> i feel like i feel like they would bog down with a single hopper car Seventeen thousand pounds i don't you know i don't know i don't know what an empty hopper is but it's yeah i don't pretty stout i want to say a loaded one was like thirty-five thousand pounds no a loaded one was like forty thousand pounds they were heavy yeah, they're, they're they're big monsters, um, but like yeah, uh, and a cordwood load is like forty eight thousand pounds or some ridiculous thing. So it's like it's good times. But yeah, let us know what you guys think of the comments down below. We're just gonna head back up to the freight depot, which isn't really much but full reg in it. So you know. Yep. We'll catch you all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah. Bye. See ya.